Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this demo on PowerShell predictors, uh, in particular for PNP PowerShell and for CLI for Microsoft 365 in PowerShell. OK, just a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Anoop. I'm a, an MVP in Microsoft 365 development. I'm a developer at a company called Content and Cloud based in the UK. Um, uh, th there are links uh, to my profile and blog and Twitter and GitHub. Uh, you can follow me on those platforms if needed. OK, so before I jump into the demo, I wanted to thank uh, Cohen, uh, Gautam, uh, Stephen and Jason uh, for all their uh, help and input uh, on these predictors. Uh, so Cohen and Gautam uh, helped with the idea of, of the predictors and then uh, Stephen and Jason, uh, who are from the PowerShell team in Microsoft, um, told us how the predictors could be developed. So thank you. Uh, thank you to the team once again. OK, now it's time for the demo. Uh, Right. Before I jump into the demo, I just want to set some context uh, as to why we developed the predictors and how the idea came about, and then show you the predictor itself. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, we've got with respect to PowerShell, we've got Windows PowerShell and uh, the new PowerShell core, or uh, which is called PowerShell 7 now. Um, so, uh, the demo that I'll be showing will be applicable only to PowerShell. Uh, you know, not Windows PowerShell, just the PowerShell Core or PowerShell 7. Um, uh, the, the reason why it is called only PowerShell and the word Windows is removed is because PowerShell runs on uh, Linux, Mac, and Windows as well. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what I've done is I've gone ahead uh, and installed PowerShell 7 on my machine. Uh, you can do that as well. Uh, there are a lot of articles available on how to install it. Uh, uh, and I have gone ahead and done that. So what I will do now is I'll just uh, uh, open uh, PowerShell uh, that I've installed on my machine. Now, there are several ways of accessing PowerShell uh, on your machine. Uh, one option is by using Windows Terminal. Uh, the other option is, uh, you know, using the uh, you know uh, the PowerShell 7 um, uh, window itself, and then uh, the third option is you know if you've got Visual Studio Code, which uh, which I guess everyone has, uh, you can open the terminal and then uh, access PowerShell uh, from terminal as well. Uh, my preferred way is the Windows terminal, uh, so I'll be using that uh, for all the. You know, for for, the, for this demo, but uh, all the concepts that I'm, I'll be showing in the demo will be applicable uh, when you open PowerShell 7 anywhere. Right. So uh, we've got PowerShell installed, and uh, uh, let's say that you know, uh, you know we, we start the work uh, in the morning, run a few PowerShell commandlets, uh, uh, and then finish our day by uh, closing the PowerShell and logging off. And next day, uh, when we come back to the office, uh, or, or you know, when, when, when you log in, uh, you open PowerShell and you'd start wondering what was that command that I ran, ran um, you know, at 3:26 p.m. yesterday. Uh, so for that, what, what you would do is uh, you'll use your uh, favorite up and down arrows. Uh, maybe that is one option uh, to go through the history and uh, you know find out what the uh, what the command uh, you wanted to run. Uh, however, uh, what the community has done is in order to make that experience better, um, they've given us a module called as PS read line. Uh, so it is, uh, I'll just open my browser window and show that. So it is this module, uh, 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 PS read line, it is open source. A uh, lot of community members contribute to this module. Uh, so what I have done is I've just gone ahead and uh, installed this module on my machine by using the, uh, you know, all the instructions over here. Uh, and then there are some instructions as well in order to, uh, you know, uh, enable this module, we have to run certain commandlets. Uh, so I have installed this module. Now what I'll do is I'll enable this module uh, by running certain commandlets. So I'll just uh, open uh, the profile in Notepad. Uh, and then what I do is I'll just uncomment these three lines. I'll be explaining to uh, uh, you know these to you in a minute, but these are nothing but the basic, uh, 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 you know, uh, basic 
commands that that we usually run once we install the PS read line module. So I've made that change in my profile and then save that and then I close it. What I'll do is I'll just open a new tab of PowerShell. Now, uh, if I start typing in something, let's say foo, you can see that the PS read line module goes through the history of all the commandlets that I have ran with the word foo in them and then shows the top 10 commandlets. So with that, you know, uh, I can easily find out what were the commands that I ran with the word foo in it. Um, the, uh, you know, for example, even if I run ngrok, uh, you can see that, you know, it, it shows me all the commandlets uh, that I have ran, use, which use the word ngrok uh, from my history. Um, uh, so this uh, showing the history uh, of the commandlets is just one of the many capabilities uh, that is pro provided by PS Readline. Uh, another capability is so if I type in add and then it shows me all the history and let's say if I select one of the commandlets and then if I want to cycle through the arguments, then I can just press Alt A and then uh, you know st start typing in some values uh, and then you know cycle through the arguments again. So it's like you know, makes your life easy uh, at this module. So, uh, you know, PS Readline, uh, I highly recommend uh, for you all to install that module um, because, uh, you know, and, and take a look at the blog post provided by Microsoft on this module uh, to get to know all the information or, sorry, or all the capabilities uh, provided by this module. Uh, now, the best thing, or one of the best things of the PS3 line module is Microsoft have given us an ability to extend uh, this module in such a way that we can add our own predictions. So if I go back to the example again, uh, wherein I was searching for foo, um, so you can see here that uh, uh, it, it searches uh, from my history. Yeah. So all the predictions or all these suggestions are coming from the history. Uh, now, with with the uh, with the extension capability on the PS line module, uh, we can control uh, these predictions and say that uh, you know the predictions instead uh, instead of it coming from the history, uh, it should come from history and uh, our custom set of predictions. Um, so. Uh, when we came across uh, this capability, uh, we thought that we can implement this for uh, PNP PowerShell as well. Uh, so what do I mean by that? Um, um, say, for example, if you start typing in a commandlet, which is provided by PNP PowerShell, then you will get some predictions uh, for that commandlet. So before showing you uh, how it works, I, I just want to show the uh, the GitHub repository where we are hosting, uh, uh, where we have hosted this module. Uh, so it's called, it's under the PNP uh, PNP account under the name uh, Predictors, and we have got two predictors at the moment. One is the predictor for PNP PowerShell, and the other one is uh, for CLI for for Microsoft 365. So if I go into the PNP PowerShell predictor, um, in the README, uh, you know, uh, we have all the instructions on how to install this module uh, uh, and uh, how to start using this module. So what I've done is I have gone ahead and run this command, uh, which is install uh, PNP PowerShell predictor. And uh, what I'll do now is run this command, which is importing the module uh, onto the PowerShell window that I've got open. So I've just copied that, and then I'll just run import uh, the predictor. Now what this does is this imports the predictor module uh, in in the PowerShell window. Now if I start typing in uh, some commandlets, say for example, connect uh, PNP, uh, you can see that, uh, you know, the, we get predictions from the history, but at the bottom over here, we are getting the predictions from the PNP predictor module. Uh, so uh, what I can do is um, if I don't like any of the connect PNP online commandlets that I have ran from history, uh, then I can just you know, scroll down and then look for the other options uh, that are provided uh, by the predictor module. Uh, uh, and then oh, once I'm happy with one of these uh, predicted options, uh, what I can do is press Alt A and then circle through the cycle through the arguments and then change them uh, as and how needed. Uh, now, uh, if I show you a couple more examples, maybe get PNP, uh, you can see that uh, the predictor starts uh, predicting all the commandlets that start with the uh, with the name get. 
PNP. Right. Uh, so how does this work? Uh, well, what we are doing essentially is uh, this predictor module. Once you import it, um, it goes ahead and fetches all the commandlets from the uh, PNP PowerShell uh, documents, uh, uh, in particular the examples, and then shows the, uh, shows them to you. So, for example, if I go to the PNP, uh, if I go to the PNP PowerShell. Uh, website and then go into commandlets and search for connect PNP online. So what we've got here is on this page, we've got a lot of examples. Uh, um, and then uh, the PowerShell module, which I showed to you just now, the predictor module uh, shows these examples as predictions so that you can you can select these uh, examples or one of these examples when uh, when using PowerShell. OK. So if I just go back to the uh, PowerShell window again, uh, um, so we saw that when, whenever we start typing in something, uh, like get PNP, uh, it goes ahead and predicts all the PNP PowerShell uh, command list. One other option that uh, we have provided is uh, uh, something called as the, uh, you know, the changing the search method for this predictor module. Uh, so for example, uh, if I just say set PNP predictor search, uh, and then we've got a few methods on that uh, to say whether whether the search should be a fuzzy search or a contained search or a starts with search. Uh, by default, it is contains. Now, if I change that to fuzzy, uh, what happens is if I type something like update Viva, then it gives me all the commands that have the name, uh, you know, that contain update and Viva in it. So, for example, that command let update PNP Viva connections dashboard is uh, shows up in, in the in the predictions. OK, so that was the PNP PowerShell predictor module. Uh, using the same concept, what we have done is we've created another module called as the uh, CLI for Microsoft 365 predictor. Uh, so if I just uh, import that module as well, uh, which is again, the name is CLI Microsoft 365 PowerShell predictor. Uh, it's in uh, uh, GitHub uh, as well in the same repository uh, under predictors. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and import that module. And then if I start typing in some uh, CLI for Microsoft 365 commandlets like M365 login, uh, you can see that uh, you know it starts predicting the the comma the CLI for Microsoft 365 commandlets. Um, like like we saw for PNP PowerShell. So again, the concept is the same. Um, uh, the the examples or the predictions that are shown here are from the CLI for Microsoft 365 docs. Um, so um, you know, we uh, we get all the examples from there and then uh, sh show them in, as part of the predictions. Okay. Uh, now. Uh, uh, because we've got a few minutes, I'll quickly show you how we get these pred predictions. So if I go back to the uh, the PowerShell uh, PNP PowerShell predictor, uh, so what we do is, um, you know, when 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 you import the PNP PowerShell predictor module, uh, we run uh, a part, uh, you know, a small piece of code which goes ahead and checks the version of PNP PowerShell that you've got installed on uh, on your machine, and based on that, uh, we go ahead and uh, you know start predicting the suggestions. So uh, if I go to my browser window and then uh, uh, you know I'll quickly show you the code. Uh, so what we do is when when you uh, or when we import the module, uh, we go ahead and register uh, the predictor, uh, as you can see on line number 18, uh, and then um, and then uh, we've got we've got a uh, you know a path uh, to the JSON file which contains all the commandlets, which I'll show to you in a minute. So if you look at line number 13, here we are saying that uh, get me a JSON file. Uh, which contains all the suggestions based on the version number. Um, uh, and then if I quickly show you the, uh, the service itself, uh, what we do is, uh, you know, once you import the module, it runs all the all the code, and this is uh, the code that uh, that eventually gets executed. Uh, so what we do is uh, we go ahead and get the JSON file with all the predictions, uh, and then load that uh, into the PowerShell window. 
Uh, now I keep talking about the JSON file. What does it look like? Uh, so under the PNP PowerShell repository, uh, we've got a folder called resources and then a folder called predictor. And you can see that there are a lot of JSON files over here. Uh, each corresponding to to the version uh, of the PNP PowerShell. Now, of course, these are all night re nightly releases, uh, but if we have a major release in the future, uh, there'll be a JSON file for that as well. So if I open one of these JSON files uh, uh, and then zoom in a bit, uh, you can see that uh, you know we've got all the command lets over here, uh, you know, the, the command itself and the command name. Uh, so the code that I showed you earlier basically takes this JSON and then shows uh, the commands in the uh, PowerShell window. Right, so that was the demo. Uh, so in summary, uh, I showed you the PNP, sorry, the PS3 line module, which helps us um, in uh, in sh showing the history. That's just one capability. We can also, uh, you know, look at other capabilities that is provided in the documentation. Uh, now that PS3 line module uh, provides us an ability to, to extend so that we can show our uh, uh, custom predictors. And we looked at two custom predictors. One is the PNP PowerShell custom predictor, and the other one is CLI for Microsoft 365 uh, predictor. And here are some links uh, that uh, that can be uh, used in order to look at the predictors. And with that, I will hand it over to David again. Thank you very much, everyone. Awesome, Anoop. This is super, super cool. And I mean, all the time savings that it provides uh, definitely adds up. Um, I think the only thing we need is a predictor for the UEFA Champions League. And uh, maybe that's coming soon, right? So we can get that in place. There was some mention about the the repo, I think it might be still set as private. So we'll, we'll look into that and get that taken care of everybody. Uh, but really awesome stuff. Can't wait to see where this uh, goes from here.